Development is going ahead very fast in Dunstable, but still the greatest single development the town has to contend with is the growth and use of the motor car. Dunstable is the major shopping centre for a catchment area of about 40,000 people. But this figure is on the increase and could even double by 1981. The shops, which mainly consist of new fronts on the old properties, are strung along three or four roads leading to the A5 and A505 central crossroads. Amongst the shops are banks, churches, offices and civic buildings. Dunstable must be thought of as having four main shopping areas, each one separated by a moving barrier of traffic along Watling Street, Church Street and West Street. The largest single problem is to reunite these four shopping areas into one traffic-free shopping precinct. The areas behind most of these shops are either underdeveloped or comprise outworn property, usually of a semi-commercial nature. Rebuilding these shops to cater for the increasing population will solve nothing. Pedestrians would still have to walk long distances to get from shop to shop, and the traffic problem would still remain. The shopping centre's main defect is that it will be unable to cope with the motor traffic of the future. Action is necessary now. This central shopping area would never, in its present form, be able to function as a place where people could shop and carry on their business safe and free from the danger, inconvenience, noise and smell of the traffic. What can be done? Many possible solutions have been put forward, all assuming long-distance traffic would have an alternative out-of-town route. Widening Watling Street has been suggested, but in 20 years, traffic will have increased to such an extent that road widening would only give temporary relief, and in any case would violently oppose the principle of pedestrian vehicle separation. Footbridges and underpasses for pedestrians crossing the A5 and A505 would not give a satisfactory central area environment and the road width would be insufficient for future traffic needs. To leave the existing road system and build a semi-continuous pedestrian shopping deck on the first floor with servicing at ground level was one idea. A uniform ground floor height and solidly built existing buildings are required, neither of which unfortunately exist. What then are the principal objectives to be attained for the working solution of Dunstable's town centre problems to enable the central area to be a place, such as this example at Stevenage, where people can shop, the businessmen carry on their work and all be free from the smells, noise and danger of the traffic. Redevelopment must not allow the town to solidify in its present form. The first objective would be to divert traffic not stopping in the town centre to an alternative route, clear of the centre. How can this be done? In the summer of 1963, all drivers of motor vehicles either entering or leaving the Dunstable area were asked where they had come from and their destination. The built-up and surrounding areas of Dunstable were then divided into zones. The origin and destination of traffic into and out of each zone was tabulated from the answers obtained from the drivers of the vehicles. From this information, a diagram was drawn showing the main movements of traffic from zone to zone. The red bands show traffic which had stopped for business in Dunstable. The blue
blue bands indicate non-stopping through traffic. The widths of the bands of colour show the amount of traffic between zones. Note the effect Luton has on Dunstable's traffic circulation. Minor points are the large flows of non-stopping through traffic along the A5 and the direct flow between Leighton Buzzard and Luton which has to pass through the Dunstable area. These flows were then allocated to the existing street network. But this traffic is reckoned to increase threefold by the year 2000 if the present rate of vehicle ownership goes on. Remembering this, and that the A5 at present is working to the maximum capacity at peak hours, it will be seen that the existing road network will be incapable of carrying this vastly increasing flow. People working in shops, factories and transport undertakings and local residents are to be questioned in a further survey. This survey will find the relationship between the way land is used and the traffic it produces. It will then be possible to predict future traffic movements so that detailed designs for roads, their widths and the number of traffic lanes can be determined. A new system of roads must therefore be planned now. Building development is going ahead so fast that an opportunity not taken now will be much regretted by future generations. First consideration would be a new urban motorway constructed to pass along the foot of the downs in the open country south of the Luton Dunstable A505. Secondly, Watling Street, or the A5, to be diverted east of the town centre from Caddington Turn to Puddle Hill. These new roads, which will carry the main traffic flows, will be landscaped and developed as parkways, similar to this example on the A6 at Malden Wood near Clop Hill. Junctions will be designed to motorway standards. Frontage development, like this on the A505, will be banned on the new roads. This shocking example cuts into the green wedge between Dunstable and Luton. To distribute the traffic to shops, residential and industrial centres, a secondary system of roads will be required. The most important of these is the road connecting the London County Council development at Houghton Regis to the new town centre. This road will cross the A5 diversion road at a two-level junction and enter the town via Dog Kennel Walk. Construction of this road is to be started shortly. Another new road from Dog Kennel Walk to West Street will bypass the St Mary's Roman Catholic Church. To complete the bypass, traffic from West Street to Church Street will be diverted to the south of St Peter's Priory Church. This new system of roads will ensure the central business and shopping area of Dunstable remains free from all cross movements of traffic. The second objective must be to segregate local traffic from shoppers by traffic free areas and provide shopping space for the present and future population. This has been done with success in many other towns. This is Stevenage, one of the first new towns to be designed with traffic-free shopping precincts. Coventry, the first town centre to be built after the Second World War, also segregating the traffic from the pedestrians. Bedford is also aiming to keep its pedestrians away from the traffic. It could be like this in Dunstable.
These pictures show how Costain are tackling the problem on their site near the junction of the A5, A505 crossroads. It's one step further in the plan to provide Dunstable with a traffic-free shopping area. By 1981, shopping facilities for up to 80,000 people may have to be provided, and all within a traffic-free environment. To cater for this increase, about 150,000 square feet of shopping floor space will be required by 1981. About a third of this is provided by the Costain scheme. This model of the scheme shows one way in which it is possible to create a traffic-free shopping precinct, and one which will also serve the population requirement until 1971. Development is well underway. The third objective must be to provide extra car parking for the increasing shoppers and business people. There are many ways of doing this, such as this multi-storey car park at Bedford, which is most successful and has recently been doubled in size. Costains have allowed for adequate car parking to serve their pedestrian precinct. In Stevenage, delivery vehicles load and unload on either side of this shopping precinct. Allowance must be made for this service loading in Dunstable's pedestrian precincts. The fourth objective is to enhance and retain the character and historical associations of the town, much of which evolves around the Priory Church of St. Peter. All that remains of the Priory of St. Peter, founded in 1132. Here the divorce of Catherine of Aragon and Henry VIII was proclaimed. These gardens adjoin the church, but there are also many other places. William Chu, a London distiller, built this school, now called Chu's House, for 40 poor boys. He also provided this row of almshouses for the needy of the town. These represent but a few of the places worth keeping. The fifth and last objective, to program the proposed development so that it can be carried out in self-contained stages over the next 30 to 40 years. eventually building up to the final pattern so that by the year 2000, Dunstable could look like this. The combination of these five objectives will ensure that it is possible for Dunstable to adapt itself to the motor car age along the lines laid down by the Buchanan report. The whole plan can be put into operation cheaply and easily here compared with many other existing towns. It can also be done with a minimum of disturbance to existing uses. But action must be taken now to create a modern traffic-free centre to serve a large proportion of the people living in the south of Bedfordshire. Development is proceeding at such a pace in Dunstable that opportunity not taken now will be much regretted by future generations. Now is the time for Dunstable to look towards 2000. Not to look ahead to this. Or this. Or this. Or this. But this. Dunstable has the problem. The people of Dunstable have the choice.